Will you join me in the holding area as the cars are getting ready to go out for the second race in the Nankang Tyres BMW Compact Cup. Owen Hunter, race winner earlier on in Class B, is on pole position for this B and C race, and if he wins, that will really put the pressure on Steve Daly in the later race. It's over to Andy McEwen to take you through the rest of the grid. Thanks very much, Lord. Yes, it will. Here's Owen Hunter and Ian Jones on the front row of the grid for this one. Ben Huntley and Gordon McMillan on row two. And Paul Hinton and David May on row three. Row four for Mark Skeeter and Mikey Dable. Row five, Matt Flowers and Craig Jamieson. And row six for Keith Towers and Tim Scott Andrews. Row six for Rob Marshall and Aaron Morgan. Then it's Jim Barrett and Martin Gadsby with David Sharp and Simon Welch on the ninth row together. Then outside towards the back end of the top 20, Phil Adcock and Nick Edmund with Sam Carrington Yates out again once more with a 10 second delay to his race. So the red lights go on and for the second time this weekend for Group B, they are in action the first time for Group C and it's not a great start from the uh, pole position there for Owen Hunter. Who has been in contact further back there. I think that was the 76 machine getting bashed around this way and that. And Simon Welch, but they all get in towards Turn 1 safely for the first time. On board with... Robert Marshall as they go up through the first corners and he slots in line just behind uh, a few of the cars in the midfield but it will be Jones that leads the way Owen Hunter though gets a much better exit out of Charlie's gets himself alongside he wants a double race victory doesn't he to really apply the pressure to Stephen Daly in the championship he's already done that by beating him in race one if he can win race two then Stephen will have to win race uh, three to uh, have any chance of uh, limiting the damage done points wise. So Hunter takes the lead, Jones second, Huntley third, David May fourth, Paul Hinson fifth, and Gordon McMillan in sixth position. Mark Skeets there in seventh. On board again with Robert Marshall, as that's Tim Scott Andrews in front of us in the multicoloured number 63 car. Dropping down the hill, Ian Jones, all four wheels on the grass. That could give Huntley a chance up the inside into Mansfield. Not quite, because he has got David May attacking him. Now, Ben Huntley, remember, was on course, potentially, for his best finish of the year so far in race one. Then he had a moment at Barn Corner, slid wide and collected the stationary car uh, of Brendan Murphy that was part of the side of the road, breaking his rear suspension. Well, Huntley's got the car fixed for race two and really wants to try and improve upon the eighth place finish that was his best result so far. So he's running third at the moment. That would be his first podium of the season if he could finish there. And of course, he will not be out in race three because that will be for groups A and C. So this is last chance to try and get a really good result out of the weekend. Owen Hunter leads the way though. Ian Jones is second, probably third, then May, then Hinson, then McMillan, then Skeets flash through. There is Skeets here after his second go uh, in the uh, here at Cadwell Park. Then they drop their way back down in towards turn number one again at the completion of the lap. And it is very close stuff indeed. There's David May in fourth position on board with Robert Marshall again as he chases down the Tim Scott Andrews car from Twin Casey Motorsport who prepare uh, the car for Stephen Daly, of course, also pre preparing uh, Robert Marshall's car on the Scottish Compact with competitors. Leaders down through the dip, back up and over the hill towards Park Corner this time around. Having got the lead early on, it looks like Owen Hunter's getting away from Jones in second. Huntley third, defending the inside line heavily in towards Park Corner from David May. There goes Hinson and McMillan. McMillan in his first appearance of the weekend, of course. Things started off pretty well at Brands Hatch for him, but then a sixth and a seventh. And Snetterton have rather lost him some ground in the championship. So with Marshall once more. There is the fight for third. Huntley and May, and again, David May has a little chink of an opportunity to get up the inside, but without taking the risk of contact, he decided to back out of it. That just loses some speed on the exit of the corner, though. So Paul Hinson and Gordon McMillan close in to almost within striking range, but they will stay single file into the mountain section. So Ian Jones then, who's running in second place, they caught a glimpse with the black and pink crocodilla sponsored car. He's the only one of the front runners in the championship not to have raced yet today. Well, he and David May are the two. So when they finish this race, we'll be able to get a better picture of what the point situation is. But uh, I can tell you that uh, the gap between Hunter and Daly went down to 15 points uh, from 17 points that it was going into the first race. And Ian Jones was only a point behind Owen Hunter. So if Jones could have a decent finish in this one, he will maintain the pressure on Stephen Daly as well. Of course, he was tied for points with Matt Parks, though. And so Matt, who finished third, well, if Jones could finish second in this race, he will score more points out of his first race. And they'll be out together in the third race of the weekend. Robert Marshall again, getting some good on board footage from him as we 
flick back now to the fight for third place. Ben Hundley and David May. David May having a sensational start to the season. The 118 rescue delivery car. And uh, it's looking good. It's looking quick as well, it has to be said. Sixth in the points coming into this weekend. But again, he was only two points behind Paul Hitz. And this time he does manage to just open the door to see on the inside of Ben Hundley. Not quite. Ben shuts the door, but that was... Well, we've seen that a few times, haven't we, already in this race from David May. He'll go for it, but not fully commit to the move. And then he sort of locks the brakes, and there's just always a bit of contact. And he needs to be careful with that, because that could get a bit too touchy-feely if he keeps going on that way. Board there briefly with Hunter as we check back in with the fight for third place now. And Gordon McMillan in fifth place trying to become a part of this battle as well. He's in behind Hinson now, going into the mountain once again in this 15-minute race, approaching half race distance already. And the top two really clearing off and fairly well spaced out between them as well. It's really all about this fight for third. Can Huntley fend off David May? Watching for them as they come down in towards the right-hander at the hairpin. earlier on, Paul Hinson was only two points ahead of David May going into this race, but well, of course they're both out in this one, so if David could beat him, that goes some way towards maybe overall he can go fifth place in the championship because this will be Hinson's second final race of the weekend. And Marshall now, he still can't find a way past Tim Scott Andrews, he's got Keith Towers behind him, who we mentioned in race one, having a bit of a lacklustre weekend actually by his, uh, these days, fairly high standards. Marshall that silver car with the red wheels chasing him down. Speaking of chasing down, Gordon McMillan is on the tail of Paul Hinson now, properly on the tail of Paul Hinson, but they've dropped back some way from Huntley and Bay up the road, so there's maybe some sort of drama between those two. Leaders back up the hill again, and it is still the same order between Tim Scott Andrews and Robert Marshall. Towers is right on the tail of Robert as well, so it's much a shame we don't have a rearward facing camera on Robert Marshall's car because he's got a tension front and back here, running in the midfield of this race, gets a bit sideways, yellow flags out in front now, what's happened there? Somebody had a moment coming out of the gooseneck or into Mansfield, no sign of a car on the side of the road just yet. It is, must have gathered it all together, but um, it's a very, very popular part of the circuit to have a moment. Oh, green flag still showing in the background, so there must be a car that's off the road up at that part of the circuit. I'll have to wait and see who just come through this time because it was someone, I think, putting inside the top 10. Still on board Marshall, though, as he makes his way towards the hall bends once again. Trying desperately to find a way past TSA, Tim Scott Andrews, which I just realised is not running with any door numbers on that car because it hits a uh, very, very plain livery. It's not mandatory to run door numbers in this championship. The event of the matters don't. But, uh, he is uh, doing well at the moment to keep the silver car and Marshall at bay. Across the line, Marshall this time gets himself alongside, does he? And to the outside, back to the inside towards Coppice, but you're not going to get up the inside from that far back, or are you? Robert carries all the speed in the world into Coppice and proves me completely wrong, makes the move stick, and a brilliant move it was as well. So Marshall picks up another place, and he's now got a bit of clear air in front of him. He's got the car soaring at the wheel there, trying to keep it going in vaguely a straight line. Tim Scott Andrews now dropped behind Robert Marshall, and has to now, ah, there, there was Aaron Morgan, who has been off, it would appear. Ah, that was the car sort of the right-hand side of the shot, and that other side of the barrier is the exit of the gooseneck. And, um, is unfortunately out of the race after making his way into the tyre wall. Marshall now as he heads into the gooseneck and drops down the hill. Pulling away quite well actually from Scott Andrews at the moment now. There's still yellow flags out here. You imagine not. Everyone's had a chance to see that car there and it is a fair distance off the road. So not as close as Brendan Murphy's car was when it went off in race one and was then collected. Andrews is uh, defending busily here in the midfield. This is what the racing is always like in the middle of the field. In the Lancome Tyres Compact Cup. No room 
to breathe, regardless of whether you're fighting for first or 21st, it's so, so close. <laughs> Bunny rabbits uh, with a grandstand view there at the side of the road, going through the hall bents, and uh, they'll be on the lookout for errant BMWs, I'm sure. <laughs> Just goes to show what a rural setting we are in here at uh, Cadwell Park. Right, back with third place, Ben Huntley and David May still doing battle here. They've continued to got this gap now over McMillan, who is ahead of hints behind, so Gordon McMillan's gained a place. David May will just hear a little bit there as he came out of Charlie's, but he's in the slipstream now. He could have a go again at the top of the hill. He's tried this once before, though, of course, and it didn't really work. In the toe, up towards breaking zone, and he will defend the inside line, and he's going to defend it for all he's worth, because he really wants this third-place finish. The first podium of the year would be a great way to make up for what has been a slightly less successful start to the season than promised, really. He showed some really good pace throughout the second half of last year, but into the start of this season, it's just not quite gone to plan. David May out onto the grass. He'll be told off for exceeding track limits if he keeps doing that. In fact, he'll be more than told off. He'll be given time penalties adding on to his race if he um, keeps on exceeding the track limits. So back into the mountain. And Hubley oh, runs a bit deep there. David May sensed a chance maybe to get alongside, but he wouldn't be able to do anything with anything because it's the wrong side of the road into the second part of the mountain. Their dicing, though, is allowing Gordon McMillan to make this a three-way fight for third now. So Hubley from May from McMillan. And all three of these could do with a good result, really. Back out of the hairpin into Barn. And still no change in the order. It is very difficult to overtake around here in Cadwell Park. You really have to think of the overtaking manoeuvre through. And more often than not, try and force the mistake out of the driver you're trying to pass. Onto to the final lap of the race we go, though. And so it's now or never for the fourth place man, David May, who is right there with Huntley. He says he's got to have a go somewhere around the uh, rest of this final lap. But where does he do it? Huntley sideways going out of Charlie's. That will give a little bit of hope to David May that maybe he can drag alongside up the park straight. But I think David maybe had to feather the throttle as well just to avoid uh, running into the back of the sideways Ben Huntley. Break zone hard on the brakes. Into the right hand. There's almost been a contact there. Has David May been able to force the door open again on the inside into Chris Kerb? No, he hasn't. And the Millen, of course, is right there as well. They're running so close together. Doing really well not to make contact. David May looking up the inside towards the goose neck. Has he been able to make this one stick? Oh, he's on the grass. David May on the grass. Oh, so too Ben Hudley on the grass as well. But David May will go through. So what on earth happened there? They disappeared frustratingly from our sight. May is sideways again uh, down at the gooseneck, but that was a uh, spectacular rally crotch accident. I, I didn't even know where Ben Hudley had gone. He just appeared from the right-hand side of the screen, bouncing and sliding his way across the grass. But David May has got third place. Hudley's coming back in there over the mountain, side by side up towards the hall bends. This won't work. Someone's going to have to give. Hudley on the inside. David May on the outside. Hudley goes through and retakes the position. And so David May loses out. And now he's got Gordon McMillan and Paul Paul Hinson breathing down his neck. Two more corners to go. McMillan on the inside into the hairpin. Can't do it there, surely. No, he can't. And so Ben Huntley tenaciously hangs on to this third position. Back out of the final corner they go, down towards the uh, end of the lap. And we are going to get one more lap out of this one, I think, then. So, um, beg your pardon, it wasn't the final lap last time around. This will be the final lap. And is Ben Huntley going to be able to hang on to this third place? Treated some cracking racing this weekend here at Cadwell Park, and just goes to show you don't need the wide open spaces of a, a Silverstone or a Donington Park to produce good racing. If you've got a field of closely, um, evenly matched cars, evenly matched drivers, you can take them to any circuit in the world and they will produce a good show. And that is uh, what we're seeing here from the uh, Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup. Uh, Dylan now having a look at the inside of David May into Park Corner. Still just can't find a way through. Can Gordon in the 35 car. Now here we go again there. David May seems to have a good run out of Chris Curve every time, doesn't he? Seems able to attack down into the goose then. I'll tell you what, we might even get one more lap out of this one. I'd forgotten just how far up the road Owen Hunter had escaped. And yeah, I think we will probably get around to do one more lap as well. Oh, contact! That's uh, Jim Barrett off with David Sharp. And they're both going to come straight back across the road and the barrier beckons. Oh, yes, just about for Jim Barrett. Jim Barrett and David Sharp, they made contact there. Can we got to the top of the park straight, which, as we've said, is not straight at all. It's very easy to just lean on each other and get a bit close for comfort. And that is what happened there, sadly. So both of them, well, it certainly looks like Barrett might be out of the race. It looks like David Sharp was trying to rejoin. 
down towards the start finish line and to the chequered flag does indeed come Owen Hunter so they throw the chequered flag a little bit early and Owen Hunter it is who takes the victory in race number two of the weekend Ian Joe's second third for Ben Huntley and fourth for Gordon McMillan after David May had a last lap off Paul Hinton is fifth then it's Mark Skeets Mike Doble Craig Jameson Matt Flowers and Rob Marshall rounds out the top ten then it's Carrington Yates up to 11th Keith Towers 12th Tim Scott Andrews 13th and David May dropped all the way down to 14th after that last lap drama. Aaron Morgan, our only retirement after what was another sensational race. Owen, well done, two from two. Puts a little bit of pressure on Steve for the uh, final race for today though, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, Steve's gonna rise up to it. He's champion for a reason, but um, yeah, fantastic day. Absolutely brilliant, couldn't hope for much more. Owen who won it, he's on fire today, drove perfect. He didn't quite get a good start, but he gathered it instantly, got me and just edged away. Um, so it's quite a lonely race, to be honest. Ben, well done on your podium placing. It's been tough racing here at Cadwell Park, though, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, I mean, this is a really balls-out circuit. It's up, down, there's highs and lows, and we've been through all of it today. Uh, I can believe, really. I'm actually quite speechless, really. I just don't, I'm over the moon.